So we now have, let me just maximize this a little as well so you can see it better. There we go. And what I'll also do is I'll hide this. Let's give you a bit more desktop uh, real estate. No. Okay. So guys, so this is um, an SAP uh, Business One Fiori uh, cockpit. Okay. So what we have here, we've got various different aspects to this. Um, what we have is um, we have these workbenches. So initially, um, this is one of the points where we start. Um, if we look at a sales process, so a sales process is what we would call a workflow. So this is these these workflows are pretty standard um, out of the box, and we can uh, co configure these to suit the specific needs of any um, organization. We don't have to code or anything to do that. We can just do that through configuration. But this is a pretty much sales process 101. We start with a sales quotation gone through to a sales order, gone through to a delivery, an AR invoice, and an incoming payment. Feeding into that, we could have returns um, and AR down payments and so on. Um, and that's that's just showing a, a typical sales process work, workflow. Similarly, we may on the purchasing side have start with a purchasing request, go through to a purchase order, a goods receipt, um, maybe a goods return if things aren't going well, um, but typically an AP invoice and an outgoing payment to our supply chain. Now, these are great, so they show the typical workflows that are there, but what they also allow us to do is to drive the system. So if we look at the first stage in the sales process, that might be a sales quotation. So if we click this, what it does is it throws up our sales quotation window. Okay. Similarly, sales order, this throws up our sales order windows. If we want to um, look at outstanding sales orders, I can click here and all my sales order type useful documents are here or useful useful features are here so i can see all my open items all my open sales orders and there they're all listed out right here and then i can drill into those from there as i see fit so that allows me to allows me to um uh, you know really navigate um using these little blue buttons again these are configurable based on what we need to do so maybe my role um in sales orders um involves checking stock status so that might be the top of my list and i might never do um, anything around um, pricing. So I may just um, not have that menu. And that's just down to how we configure the system uh, for, for the individual users. So that's what's known as a workbench. And there are numerous workbenches. These can be configured and edited to suit the specific requirements of each individual organization and user, because the workflows that one user may have um, may be different to another, uh, even on a sales process. Um, so um, we also have um, within the, um, the overall environment here, we have um, these uh, widgets. So this one is a, is a counter. So it's advising a stock value. Um, it's red because we're increasing and our stock value is over the predefined um, acceptable amount, for example. We can see best selling uh, items here. So this is just, a, this is just a information on, um, on uh, in inventory items that we're actually selling. I can see down here a counter, what's known as a counter uh, item. So this is my sales orders not delivered. So it's 608. And if I want to see um, what they may be, I can double click that. So this is what SAP talk about um, insights to actions. So I can double click that. And now I can see all my um, uh, sales orders not delivered. I can see all the, the details of those. I can see there are many, many pages, 600 of them. I really could do with um, dispatching some of these items. Um, but we can see then and drill down into those just in the same way as we showed you earlier. We always use this little concept of the golden arrows to drill down into the various screens with an SAP business one. Um, so, yeah, so th these allow us to have insights and to drive. So this is actual business intelligence that we're having through the user interface of the system. Um, but as opposed to running um, a, a menu item to get at this, we can drive these from the actual individual cockpits and so on. So these can be these can be set up and driven in that way. Another interesting one is down here where we've got messages and alerts. So we have activities for today. Now they could be assigned to us by the by the system. So at the start of every month, there's a particular task we can do. Maybe I'm a maintenance user and the system will suggest to me that I need to um, you know grease a machine or something like that on an ongoing basis. Um, but also these often feed in as approvals. Say, for example, if I'm a senior manager and I want to sign off on a on a on a on a document, I may that that approval will flow in here and I action it from there. So these messages and alerts come in here for sure. 
but they also flow into my SEP Business One mobile app. They flow into uh, my email uh, threads and they, they can be prompted to me in various different ways. But if I open one of them up, um, what I'll see is um, the system will, will tell me, you know, what these various tasks are. I can guide those through. Um, and then what happens is, um, uh, you know, the relevant people be notified that that task has been has been completed. Um, we also have there's a very small web browser window here, but we also have the ability to drive um, things like browser windows through here. So this is just a, a, a web page. Obviously, we typically make that bigger, but that can be really handy for things like um, uh, accessing your banking portals. Um, and these these can these screens can change depending on what what cockpit you're logged into. Um, you know, banking portals, um, external BI feeds, you know, business intelligence information, get the reporting right into your system here. Um, access to um, procurement portals and um, sales portals, put your e-commerce site right in there. You know, all of that can be done from here. And what that allows us to do then is to have, to have access to this in a very controlled fashion right at your desktop where you where you work, you know. So that's a, that's a crucial, a crucial element of it as well. Um, also, this, these cockpits, um, we can actually drill down from the side here and go into a, a more traditional standard menu structure. Um, so if we were to look at sales, which is what we're interested in here today, um, we'd have sales blanket agreements in here, which is we come to now when we look at pricing and rebates and so on. Um, we have sales quotations, um, sales orders, deliveries, and you'll see these are reflective of what we're looking at here. Um, but it's just a different way to access it. It's just the more traditional method um, to run these. But generally speaking, if we can set up your um, um, cockpits correctly, you really not ought not to depend on these menus hugely. You know, I think it's, it, uh, most of our clients will run them directly from here. And the key thing about that to enable that is to enable the end users to access these. So what we can do is we can go in here and we can um, edit these as we see fit. You know, so we can change that. We can change the order and the sequencing of these. We can move everything around on the screen. We can get rid of these. If, say, for example, I don't want this anymore, I can drag it down to the bottom corner here and put it in the in the in the trash can, and that that's going to remove that uh, from the screen here. Um, we've access to, to make these these things bigger or smaller, as you see here. So this particular um, uh, uh, web window is very small, so we can make that bigger in that way if we prefer it that way. And uh, yeah, so we can we can configure as we see fit. Um, also, we can add widgets. Let's say, for example, jump in here and um, add some dashboarding widgets to the to the system. All I have to do is click this little uh, uh, plus sign here, and that then will be added to my to my uh, uh, to my cockpit. We have literally we've got hundreds of these. They're and they're designed through years of of these KPIs of of experience in various different organizations. We tend to find that the, the KPIs that are pertinent to various different sectors are reflected here. So we've got dashboards, KPIs, counters, workbenches, uh, and so on. Um, other things, uh, common functions, and so on. My recent updates. Those are those are really handy to have. Um, so that's that's uh, crucial to know that we can also create these widgets. And again, that's an end user um, capable task. And we, we'll show you that later on in the, in the unique features area. So the ability to tailor all of these and customize them. But what we also have is the ability to uh, optimize these for specific areas. So what I have here is that the cockpit I've been running is this general demo. So it's got a whole bunch of different stuff around sales, finance, all kinds of things. But if we had a more sales optimized cockpit, it might look something more like this, um, where um, the screen is set up more to, to meet the requirements of what a typical um, sales uh, team member might, might want to look at. So you can see total sales, um, say months to date or whatever it may be, top selling items and, and suppliers. Um, we've got our workbench we talked about there, or where we are in terms of gross profit for this term. Um, and this can be set up by quarter, by month, by year, whatever we see. Um, great results on sales returns, um, very little there. Um, and outstanding sales orders, plus recent updates and so on. So it really just gives us a, a, a good, quick way to actually um, to actually look at, at, at how, we, how we'd operate there. Um, okay, so in terms of um, uh, sales order processing, um, so this is this is our next section really, um, and what we wanted to do was to be uh, just to basically show you some um, some sales processes really. Um, so what happens within the system when we navigate um, is we actually um, use these arrow keys, okay? 
so what they do is um, they allow us to um, uh, to very quickly move through records that we've actually um, generated previously. So as you see, I'm actually I'm actually moving back and forward through various different um, items here. Um, so this is a uh, for a bath actually as it happens. So if I was to look at this sales quotation, this particular item, this is a um, is a whirlpool bath. So it's an offset corner bath unit. Um, and within that, there's a bill of materials. So we've got various different components. I can actually look at that um, bill of materials um, that's actually involved with this item. So these, are, these items are all on this quotation. So the bath is the item that we're actually quoting for, but these components are required to make, make up the bath. So we have the corner unit itself, a filter, a pump, and various different lights and so on. They all fit together under the bill of materials. So it's just useful to understand that and um, that that's that the item can be shown in that way. The actual quotation that goes out can be sent um, to actually cover um, the individual item itself or the breakdown of the various componentry, totally down to how the individual um, uh, organization wants to actually demonstrate that. In this instance, we've broken down the components um, to make up the overall um, the overall product. Um, so you'll see that if I do that, I'll just fit the whole page there. So we can see. So we can see there we've got the various items and we've got labor as well um, built, into, built into that to actually put the whole thing together. Our end sales quotation though could look more like um, just the, the actual unit itself and some information around that. And we keep the, the actual componentry um, uh, you know, as, as is. And that's just, just a, um, an interesting little, little concept around that. Now, here's, here's another thing about this particular order. This order is um, uh, basically, it's, it's for, for Chadwick's who are actually a, a um, builders providers. Um, so the, the, the next step within this quotation within our process is where we would look at the next document would be, um, if we click this target document, will be actually a sales order. So what will happen is um, the quotation may have gone out in this process. And what will happen is we look at a sales order being the next document. So when we click the target document here, we'll see that this, the sales order is, is the next document has come through there. At this point, we're actually hard allocating the items um, for fulfillment. We can see down here that it's based on the, on the sales quotation 1218. 1281, sorry. Um, and what we what what actually would have happened on the system is we would have started off with the sales quotation, and then we go down in the bottom right hand corner here, copy to, and that will pop up with a little menu to allow us to select sales order or delivery. Um, then the next document, if we go back to the next target document, in the process will be our delivery itself. Now, the thing about this guys is this delivery is actually where we actually start to actually um, uh, process the the transactions. So we've got concepts like packing slips there to produce for the various items, may go out in numerous different boxes and so on. So it's, it's got to be dispatched in that way. Um, we've also got um, the um, volume and weight calculations and so on, because what they do at that point is we actually want to run our pick, pack, dispatch um, process from within the system. Um, and we, we'll see that now uh, as, we, as we move through. Um, and then if we go for the next target document, so we've sent out a, a delivery. We really need an invoice now. Um, so we go through here, and this is our AR invoice, our accounts receivable invoice. So what we'll see there is that it's a, um, the, the items are, are detailed here. At this point, um, we're getting very financial. So if we look at the journal entry on that, we'll see that that generated a journal entry. Um, and we can actually see if we click in here, where that went right into the chart of accounts. No, not there. Sorry, apologies, guys. Um, here. So that went into the into the chart of accounts under this ledger, which was sales revenue foreign. Um, so that went into our turnover drawer. But similarly, we got drawers for assets, capital reserves, and so on. So basically, um, from that from that invoice process, we've we've generated the journal entry, which is, has updated the relevant ledgers. Um, so we can see down here what we're building is based on a sales quotation, one eight. 1281 and based on a sales order 1948 and based on delivery 1490. Um, so that's that's detailed in that way. Um, and then the last um, uh, stage in the in the process would be um, our outgoing, sorry, the target document is our outgoing payment. So we would see that here. 
and this is the outgoing payment that would have um, uh, been done in relation to that. This particular one was grouped with a, with a, a number of other payments to the um, to the supplier, but that's understandable. So if I was to look at this from the standpoint of a relationship map, so this is a, a, a tool that we have to show us how um, these, uh, these uh, orders are, are set up. So what we have is um, we started off with our sales quotations. This is detailing our workflow. Um, we went through to a sales order, through to a delivery, and they are invoice and an incoming payment. We can use this tool to actually navigate any of these. So we can see straight away where you know we can jump into the sales order or the quotations. It's a really handy tool to actually understand how we've, we've processed the transactions. What's interesting about this one is um, this the financial aspect of this went through the the head office at Chadwick's, but the actual um, process, uh, the actual um, process in the order went through one of the other branches. And any of those business partners we can look at in this way, so we can see how that is actually set up. So, um, if we were to um, uh, look also with this, we can actually see um, the related items on the on the document itself as well. So again, this is our these these are the items that were on the specific invoice that we're looking at. So we have the whirlpool bath and the labor and everything. And again, we can look at those. Um, if we wanted to look at the at the corner bath, for example, this is the actual item. Okay. So this this flows in, I suppose, into a into a sales uh, order process and workflow. We need to know what we're selling. So we need we can understand the groupings and so on. Um, we can understand um, you know where the items are being purchased from sales information around the item. We store remarks around the items, you know, for e-commerce and so on. So this will, we can set these fields to flow into e-commerce as descriptions and as well as the images and so on. And um, we can also have attachments. So the concept of attachments um, allow us to do things like say, for example, issue user manuals and so on um, with the uh, with the documents. Um, so I can, I can allocate something like a document like that. Now this is obviously not a, a relevant document, but it just gives you an idea um, of you know the ability to, to associate a document with um, a uh, an item in that way, and then as we as we actually um, dispatch those items, um, it will um, then uh, avail of the ability to um, uh, avail of the ability to uh, push that user guide or terms and conditions document or whatever else out. Um, in conjunction with any invoicing or delivery notes or packing slips or whatever we might have. So we can build rules as to what we want to do with the documentation. So that kind of is, is just an idea around, around the, um, the, the sales order processing side of things. We've got some, some useful um, capabilities in here. So say, for example, this is a standard order that we tend to do a lot of. You know, we can have a lot of speed up things here, such as duplicate. So I can duplicate that order and say, for example, add it then to a new customer. If I want to search for a customer or set one up, I can search for an existing customer like this, or I can create a new one right here. Um, so that allows us very quickly um, to, to base on templates and to pre-populate um, you know, uh, orders. So it's literally that quick to set that up. We add that, and then that's a brand new document. you know. Um, but typically, um, you know, if we look at a, a, say, if we start off with a sales quotation, um, for whatever it might be. So if we said a customer might be something like, say, HSBC, you'll see we've got little pop-ups here, which suggest what that is. And then we might add an item description. So we've got all kinds of speed up um, tools here. Uh, if I can type properly, so that's Apple. So then all the different Apple items was set up in that way. But if I say select all these Apple items and then um, say I want to go select those, I can select multiple. So I can build the orders really quickly, the sales quotation, say one of those. And that actually is added in that way. So you can see it's very, very fast. We can go to the last item using the records here. Um, so that's the sales quotation. That'll have built a sales quotation straight away um, in this way. It's really nice and easy to use, um, quick imagery and so on built in there. Um, and then what we do is we said, we can copy that directly into a sales order, an invoice or a delivery. So it was a sales order everything carries through from the previous document. We got to say what the delivery date is going to be. Um, I say T for today, all sorts of areas to speed this up for us. Um, and I also might also want to then um, generate packing slips and so on. So if I add that, um, <clears throat> the document will be added in that way. And um, yeah, I can call up the last record. There it is again. So that's the sales order is now committed. 
um, and then it can generate a pick list. So that's that's going to be picked by our, our, our team. That can then flow down into handheld devices and so on. Um, and the in the pick pack dispatch side of things, so that's that's quite quite uh, interesting, you know, in terms of um, uh, information around that. Also, we've got um, areas within the within the standard system as well. We've got some of this nice BI analytical type information here, so we can see, you know, different BI around what I what I've actually put in um, into the order. Also, recommendations for a customer. So these are these are what. Um, this customer has been buying. So the system is using artificial intelligence to actually suggest um, additional um, areas that the customer may also um, purchase, you know. So I, if I want, I can just add those right in there into, into the order, you know. So there are potential upsells um, that we can do from a telesales standpoint and so on, which can be really, really handy. Um, yeah, and so that's that's it's, it's really that quick and easy. So we can update the order. Um, and then when it comes to delivery, um, uh, we can actually then just uh, copy it to a delivery. The delivery order will be generated and so on, and it moves right through. So you see it's seamless processing, pushing the order through. And if we add this, um, we will be automatically building the type of um, uh, relationship map that we showed earlier. So if we right-click on the, on the order itself, um, if you're a relationship map, we can see it's gone out to HSBC, and we've got to the point of delivery. We haven't invoiced yet. And we can see the various related items that are on the on the on the, the transaction itself. So really handy um, tools um, from a sales order processing um, scenario. Um, now sales pricing and rebates. So around pricing, uh, what we've got, guys, is um, we've got our stock management here, and then we have the concept of price lists. Okay, so we have various different things here. So we've standard price lists, okay? So our price lists work something like this. Um, so we have an infinite number of price lists available to us. Um, when we actually look at a product, let me actually call up a product first, actually might help uh, uh, more so. So if I say, for example, search for an Apple um, iPhone. Okay, so you take this guy here. Okay, so um, if we look at a, an item like this, we have various different price lists, okay? So I can have a cost price, standard cost price there at 1590, um, and then I may have a different sell price. So there's a sell price. I could have a second sell price. I may have an e-commerce price, you know? So there's any number of prices that we can have. So you'll see them, the price list listed out there, and we can call upon those based on all kinds of different criteria, who the customer is, what month we're selling it, volume discounts, volume, you know, you order a hundred item, we change from sell price one to sell price two. So it gives us a great deal of control. These sell prices are listed out here, as you see. Um, but if we were to look at the, um, at the individual price list and what are on them, this is our standard sell price list here. So I just double click that. And what you'll see is um, we have um, a cost factor. So all our different items are listed out here. Okay. And we have, if we take this resolve a weed killer, um, we have a factor of 1.5 over cost. So we're saying right across the board, we're taking a 50% markup here. Um, so we have a base price and then a sale price. Um, and that's fine. Um, so that allows us to really um, um, to, to understand that. What we can do with these price lists, we can um, do this concept here, which is copy table. And they can then be pasted straight into Microsoft Excel. We can change sale prices and then we can paste the price list back in here. Um, and what that does, we use the paste here from here, and that will go straight back in and update all the prices in the, in the list, provided you've got um, privileges and so on to do that. So um, that's the first concept. So price lists are, are, are managed fully within the system. Then within price listing here in the stock management side of things, we've got um, period and volume discounts. So for a particular um, price list, say our sale price, um, we can add specific ranges or specific groups of items. There's all kinds of ways we can discriminate these but item groups by properties of item, what the item might be, um, different ranges and so on. So we can, we can identify which products we want to put on there and then we can set it to kick in in advance or we'll have a period discount. So from the 1st of January, 2022, our new price list will go active or our new pricing will go active for this, you know. Um, and when we open that out a little wider so you can see, um, we've got um, the items, the descriptions, currency, um, the source price, whatever that may be, 
um, and then the pricing units and so on. And then what we can do is have, have um, a column added there to um, add discounts and so on. Um, we've discount groups. So we can have groupings together that we can apply items to. So add them to a discount group. So it can be for a particular um, supplier or customer. It can be um, for a group of items, properties, manufacturers, and so on. And that allows us to group um, uh, items together um, so we can apply discounts to them. We've got a strong special pricing uh, module here as well. Um, let me just pull this over a little here, guys, so you can see. Um, okay. So special pricing for business partners. So these are where we would have, um, say, for example, for this business partner, these items are going out um, at a special non-standard rate. Okay. So that's where um, a, a, a customer will, will negotiate um, special pricing with us. Um, we can copy special pricing based on criteria and so on um, and update across the global uh, state. So we can do this from here and um, this can operate across multiple companies. Um, you know, so perhaps we've got a UK, US, um, Ireland entity, whatever it may be. We can update from here and that will um, kick through the various different um, uh, legal entities and update it because we, we use shared um shared pricing, shared stock, inventory, customer, business partners. So the idea is we don't have to keep those all updated and maintained in separate, uh, in separate business entities. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot we can do around, around, around that, that sort of pricing side of things. In terms of, um, of rebates and so on, um, this is an important area to cover as well, I think. Um, so we see, we see more and more of this. Um, so around the sales menu here, we've got this concept of a blanket agreement. So a sales blanket agreement is where we have um, an agreement um, for, a, for a client to purchase a certain amount of product from us. Um, it can be, and the, the quantum can be in terms of the items, the number of items and so on, or the value or various other criteria. But uh, basically um, what this allows us to do is to set terms, um, set up an agreement, um, sell to that um, partner based on that agreement um, and collect and distribute any um, uh, rebates to the client for, for, for engaging with you in that, in that way um, in a very controlled and orderly fashion, you know, without any guessing or disagreement or anything of that nature. So in this instance, um, this is for um, HSBC. Um, they are looking at, at the procurement of, of Apple product. Um, it's not a huge, uh, uh, a huge um, sales blanket agreement. Let me see if I can find one that's maybe a little bigger. No, I've only got a couple here. Okay, that's fine. Um, so look, this would this would largely be, you know, typically be a much bigger um, quantum in terms of the of the the values here. You know, we'd typically be looking in the dozens or hundreds, but uh, nonetheless, um, what happens here is these items. They, uh, there's an agreement to purchase this many items um, over a, a particular period. So this one was from the eighth to the tenth, nineteen to the eighth to the tenth, twenty, um, and that was the agreement. Um, and then if we look at um, the notes. It's for Apple mobile technology equipment with HS, HSBC IT department. Um, so we've got um, uh, the ability to apply that to a project as we talked about as well. So we can link that in. So say, for example, the project is refit of IT. We can have a project for HSBC. We could set that up as a project and see how we are in terms of billing, um, in terms of supply of the products um, and where we are overall in the project to a whole at that point. And what we'll see is then the, the documents that are associated with this, the various sales quotations, AR invoices and so on. So if I was to look at the, at the various, at one of the documents here, say an AR invoice, um, what we would see is we would see that um, the um, blanket agreement, we normally would have a column here. We can add that um, into, the, into the form. We may have it on one of the quotations here. These grids obviously are totally configurable um, as to how we add them. We wanted to add, a, add a, an additional categorization to the form here. We just basically jump into the, the table format here. And um, if we sort it in this way, there's the blanket agreement number there. We can add that. And then blanket agreement will be added to the form. We only have to do this once when we configure. Um, but there's the blanket agreement column now um, present on the form. So we can see this sales quotation was falling under blanket agreement too. If I click through to there, it brings me into the blanket agreement we're just looking at, which is where I got at the document in the first place. So we've come full circle. Attachments around this, we might have an agreement 
So we might want to um, store that on file. Um, so this is a, a terms and conditions for this. Um, and then if we had recurring transactions, so if we'd agreed to supply a certain amount every month, the system will auto-generate those, those, those sales um, documents and so on. So that's that's roughly where we are. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's um, a little around that sort of side of things. Um, what I'd like to do as well um, is um, give you guys a look at some of, of how we actually, in a high volume setting, actually fulfill orders and so on into the system. Say, for example, from uh, external sources such as e-commerce. Um, so if I was to, um, let's just close this. A few guys now, what we could see is we've got a, um, this is a um, an AFIX. Um, we talked earlier on about the SEP add-ons. Um, so this is a, an out-of-the-box SEP certified um, web environment. Um, it works for um, uh, it works for B 2 C and B 2 B. We can see order histories and so on listed out there. Self service AR. Um, we've got um, you know various different information available to us um, within the system. But it's, it's a full e commerce platform, fully um, uh, configured and uh, fully uh, uh, integrated with the SEP business one environment. So if we were say to procure a few of these items, or what we might actually do is uh, re 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 raise a quote through the system here. The reason being is that um, it's reaching out through a payment gateway, through real X or PayPal, and, and I don't want to have to pay for these items um, on, the, on, the, on the order. So, uh, okay, so um, let's just run through there. So if we have these items listed out in this way, um, what we can do is we can run through to a checkout scenario. And we've got just a standard e-commerce um, type model. Um, I may suggest here, though, that we're going to update our collective store so we can run just a quote on this one. Um, so this is my these are my details that I've stored. Um, so I'm going to say they're OK. And then what I'm going to do is, as opposed, as I said, to going into PayPal, if I go in here, it's going to want me to actually run through the transaction in PayPal. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just run, I'll request a quote because that's not a, a financial implication, obviously. So. That's a standard order um, that's been processed um, in the in the in the uh, web environment here. What happens um, when we do that? Um, if we look back at our um, at our uh, environment, uh, our SAP Business One, um, if we go into the quotations here, what will happen is the items that we actually added here should just flow through. It may just take a second to update. There we go. Now. So there are, the, there are the items, the UMA anti-aging oil, the Tara silk, Tara silk runner, and so on. So that quotation has flowed right through um, into, the, into the system, and it's coming as, a, as, a, as an item in this way. If we look at the items that are on there, um, there are the various items listed out. We don't have images associated here. If we wanted to do that, we just simply add them here, and they would, they would then pop up on our relationship map. But basically, what that allows us to do then is to start the process uh, of converting that to a sales order if the, if the client accepts it and delivery process that we just talked about. But if we are in the e-commerce um, uh, transaction solution in this way, if we do um, run through, add this to cart um, and say, I go into the cart here um, and I just check out, deliver to, do me a to cart. If I check out, say for example, with a PayPal scenario, I'll get a standard uh, PayPal window. It's not actually going through there now at all. That's fine. Um, but basically, that would actually come in as an invoice, and it would come in as an invoice uh, and delivery, uh, or sorry, delivery, sales order invoice and delivery with a payment against it. Um, and then that would flow into our dispatch uh, scenario. Also, we have um, within the system um, concepts such as point of sale. Um, so um, we've got things like SAP customer checkout, which allow us to um, uh, run uh, point of sale transactions. Um, we've got um, various LAN systems that actually push sales data directly in. And really what they do is they populate these, these various screens. Now, the environment I've been showing you here, guys, this is um, has been the um, SAP um, uh, Business One 9.3. Um, what we actually also have here 
is the brand new um, SAP Business One version 10 environment. So this is um, the latest and greatest. This is um, the new version of the, of the software. Um, it's got a new um, uh, version of the Fiori interface. Um, it's got some beautiful new, new features and functions, and not least of which is this new web environment. Um, so let me just place this. So this is um, the new web client. So it's the next generation web client. So this is SAP Business One delivered in a browser here. So as you see, so if I was to add another tab, I'm straight into Google, you know. Um, so we've got all our very same, exactly the same data we looked at earlier. You know, all your sales orders and so on are listed out um, here. There's the Chadwick Navin that we talked about. There's the information. And if I want to view more details and so on on that, it's right there. Um, so um, it's, a, it's a really nice uh, cutting edge user experience, fully web delivered. Um, so it's, it's quite exciting. Um, we've got the ability to see straight away all our recent activities um, over here. Or if we're looking over here, we've got um, things like, you know, our um, notifications and messages and alerts we talked about earlier. Uh, so, yeah, it's um, it's exciting. It's 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 uh, it's a it's a really nice uh, UX again with our built in BI um, that we talked about earlier. Um, so it's just the same as we said at the beginning, the same information, same data consumed through a different uh, screen. So. That's going to conclude what I want to show you here today, guys. Um, what I will do, though,